Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating a spline attractor effect in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by CG Shortcuts Courses, our online training platform where you can take your motion graphic skills to the next level. We've got an ever-growing range of courses in the same straight-to-the-point, easy-to-follow format of our YouTube videos. Each course also comes with loads of project files and downloadable assets, as well as support directly from the course instructor. Our YouTube subscribers get 5% off all courses with the code YouTube5, so check it out today. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, to start things off, we need to create some straight splines. And a good way to do that is actually with a helix. So we'll bring one of those in. And if we change the plane to ZY, we can point it along the X axis here. And if we zero out the start and end radius, we can turn this into a straight line with nice evenly distributed points. And we can actually choose the subdivisions really easy with a helix as well with the subdivision option here. So to keep our simulation running nice and fast, let's lower this down to 60. And we'll also lower the intermediate points down to two. Okay, so we want a few ropes in here so they can interact with each other. So with the helix selected, let's head over to the MoGraph menu and holding Alt, we'll apply a cloner object. And rather than having our clones laid out like this, I'll change the mode to radial and I want them laid out on the X axis. So we'll also change the plane to ZY. Okay, that's looking good. And we might just make this an even four splines, but you can choose as many as you like. Obviously, the more clones you have, the slower the simulation. Then we'll bring these guys closer to each other by lowering that radius. And we'll just move this into the center of our scene. So now we can make these splines dynamic. We'll right click on the cloner and head over to simulation tags and give it a soft body tag. Then over in our soft body tab, we'll let these bend a bit more freely by decreasing the structural amount to 50. And we'll remove the damping and the shear and the damping here as well. Then we'll decrease the flexion and remove this damping as well. And now we'll give this a play and see what happens. Just as you might expect, it's just falling down because of the gravity in our scene. So let's rewind that and hit Control D to bring up our project settings. And we'll head over to the scene dynamic setting here. And under the general tab, we can just disable that gravity by setting this value to zero. And while we're here, I also wanna head over to the expert tab. And to get a more accurate simulation, we want to increase the steps per frame and the solver iterations. So let's see what that gives us now. We get a bit of a stretchy thing at first, then everything starts to collapse in on itself and float around in the center now that there's no gravity. So we're getting close, but it's probably a good time to add our dynamic forces. Let's grab our dynamics tag and over under simulate, we'll go to the forces menu. And rather than using the attractor force, let's use the newer field force, which is going to give us some extra flexibility and allow us to control things with fields. And when that's in our scene, we can add a field up here and we want these splines to bunch up in a bit of a ball shape. So I think the spherical field is probably a good option. And now we've got a bit of a visualization of that field. And if we look at our force, you can see that spherical field has been applied down here. So let's see what that does for us. Hopefully this will collapse into a bit of a ball shape here, but I think the effect might be a tad too intense. So we'll stop that and we'll reduce the strength of our force to something like three. And we might also reduce the size of our field down here under the field size. Let's try 20 centimeters. Then over in the remapping section, we can adjust the fall off of this effect. And if we zoom in, the fall off is represented by these outer circles. So we can narrow down that fall off over here in the inner offset. So we'll increase that to 94%. So that fall off is a bit tighter now and will hopefully restrain this effect into more of a ball shape. Let's give it a try. And we still get a bit of weirdness to begin with, but when things settle down a bit, it should start coming together in more of a ball. Okay, so let's rewind this. And we'll fix this problem at the start where the splines are behaving a little bit weird at the beginning of the simulation. 
And we might just play this through again to the point where it starts to settle down about there. And we actually want this to be the initial state of our simulation so we can avoid that stretching. So we'll grab our dynamics tag again and under the dynamics tab, we'll click on set initial state. And now if we rewind this, the simulation will start from that point instead and we've gotten rid of that initial stretching effect. So we'll let that play out. And I think we're almost there with this effect. Let's go back to our dynamics tag and we'll cache this simulation over in the cache tab. And we just need to click bake object and let it do its thing. And now that the animation is baked, we should get faster playback because we don't need to sim it again. So all that remains to do is give our splines some thickness. So with our cloner selected, let's head over here and holding alt, we're going to apply a connect object. And this will allow us to connect all of our spline clones together so we can apply thickness to them all at once. And then we need to pick a shape for our extrusion. So we're going to go with circle because we want these to look like rope. Then to this guy, we need to head over here and add a sweep to give us that extrusion. And finally, we need to add our connected splines into that sweep hierarchy. And I think that circle might be a bit large at the moment, which is why this has gone a bit funny. But if we reduce the radius of that to something like one centimeter, that looks better. And now if we play that back, our effect is complete and it's looking pretty cool. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Just a short one this week. As usual, you can download the project files below to save a bit of time or head over to our website where you can download every project file from every tutorial we've ever made. Big thanks to this month's patrons. You guys are the best and there's no way we could make all of these tutorials without your support. Cheers guys. So that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below or you can leave a like or dislike and don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.